Thank you. You, uh, <laughs> you, know, you sure know how to make a nervous guy relax. <laughs> I uh, want to thank you. You know, it's always surprising to walk out and hear applause without doing anything. <laughs> That's probably the most applause I'm going to hear all evening, so I'll be smart and say good night now, you know? <laughs> But I feel great. I feel great tonight. I woke up this morning in a blaze of glory. My bed was on fire. <laughs> As you know, this is a, a wonderful way to come back into television, a little bit different from what it was in 1949. I wanted to get in television, so I loved television at first, when it first came out. As a matter of fact, I sold my car to buy a television set. The, I got home, what do you think the first thing I see on television? My old car. <laughs> But you know, this, this is wonderful here. This is wonderful, and they treat you nice, you know, like the dressing rooms, the dressing, they gave me a dressing room with running, running water. <laughs> Even when you shut it off. <laughs> no, the dressing rooms here, they, they give you according to who you are. They try to make you feel comfortable. Like uh, Frank Sinatra, if he was here, his dressing room would be Italian Renaissance. The <laughs> Sammy Davis, his room would be Southern Colonial. The <laughs> Mine's early American. <laughs> I'm dressing behind an Indian blanket back there. <laughs> But I feel good, I feel good, and uh, I don't look too bad. As a matter of fact, things are starting to happen all over again. MGM called the other day, Metro Golden Mayor. They're going to redo those Tarzan pictures, and they want me for the picture. <laughs> I'm glad to get to work, but I'm sorry Cheetah died. <laughs> But you know, people walk up to me all the time and they say, gee, you look good, you know. That's one of the three ages of man. Youth, middle age, and gee, you look good. <laughs> they say to me, boy, you must exercise a lot. <laughs> the only exercise I get is acting as pallbearer for my friends who exercise a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I don't let age bother me. You know, there, there are three signs of old age. One is loss of memory, and uh, I forget what the other two are. <laughs> But I've been lucky with my age. I went right from freckles to liver spots. <laughs> But you know, last summer, last summer we had a little fright. I uh, played a state fair, and I was overcome by the heat. And it was 90 degrees, and then under the lights, you know, it makes it up about 120. <laughs> and the, the medics, they took me backstage, see. And the, this guy looked at me, and he says to my wife, he don't look too good to me. She says, to me either, but he's good to the kids, you know. <laughs> but I had a physical before I signed the contract to do this show, and the doctor says I was as sound as a dollar. <laughs> That scared hell out of me, boy. <laughs> But the doctor, the, uh, the producer of this show, though, he was very nice. He said uh, on camera, he says, I look like a million dollars, <laughs> green and wrinkled. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it's fun to walk around and meet people like I've been doing for the last seven or eight years. A little lady out at the airport, she walked up to me and she says, Red Skelton's the first time I've ever seen you alive. <laughs> There was another little lady walked up, she said, oh, Red Skelton, how about that? She said, you know, I wish I could take you home with me. This is my children sent me some tickets, and I'm going home for my birthday. I said, oh, your birthday, huh? How old are you? <laughs> she says, age is my business. <laughs> I said, you've been in the business a long time, eh? <laughs> she says, you rascal, you, I'm 91 years old. And I remember you when I was a little kid and I wanted to hit her right in the mouth. <laughs> But like I said, I feel good and uh, I, I really feel fine. Boy, I got a joke for you. Two seagulls, good to and he clear. <laughs> He's 
says, you know, if I had my life to live over again, I would like to have been a hummingbird. <laughs> he says, a hummingbird? He says, yes, they're smart. They know about life and love and everything. He says, they do? He says, sure, what do you think they're humming about? <laughs> He says, you know, we, we've got to go see that television show that Red Skelton's going to be on because he's for us. He says, what do you mean he's for us? He said, well, everybody said he's for the birds. <laughs> tonight, tonight you're going to see the various types of mimes, pantomimes, and verbomimes. Um, I happen to come from the... Uh, a branch of mime comedians that date back to the uh, Sagata. Now, a Sagata dates back to about the year of 1100. In 1600, William Shakespeare adapted the Sagata to all of his plays. What it means is that the actor comes out on stage and tells you exactly what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen, but they act it out for you anyhow, you see. And one of the nice things about we Americans, regardless of where you're from, Wherever you are at that moment, that's the part of the country you pretend that you're from. So to show how we are all basically mime and pantomimists each day of our life, I'd like to show you this typical guy from New York. Never been out. I need a hat. I need my hat. I need a hat. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to get that guy yet. <laughs> you knew him, huh? <laughs> You ain't going to be old, I'll <laughs> This fellow's from New York. He's never been on a horse, but he wants everybody to think he's a cowboy. So he tries to do everything that the cowboys do while riding a horse. <laughs> Mime artists have wandered the avenues and courtyards of Europe for centuries. And our next stars revive this colorful tradition with their own innovations and dazzling techniques. And from the street corners of San Francisco, they emerged and they became stars in television. And today, they represent the charm and the hilarity of mimes. Ladies and gentlemen, the clinkers at breakfast Shields and Yarnell.
you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs>